Praise God. Well, I'm excited tonight. I got to be honest with you. We had Brother Kurt uh, minister for us last Wednesday, and tonight Sister Brenda is going to be ministering. You know, look, I got to be honest. You know, I've already shared a little bit with you guys about how the Lord kind of flew through my bedroom one night and like a tidal wave of cleansing. He showed me what was in my heart. He showed me I was full of a critical spirit, a religious spirit. I used to not listen to a whole lot of the people as intently as I'm starting to listen now. I just want to tell you, I've already learned. So this is a little bit of wisdom I'm sharing with you. I've learned how to listen to these two people. And, uh, you know, what, well, let me just, I'm not going to go on and on because I'm going to give my sister a time. But I will tell you this. I've learned, I've, I've been around Brother Kirk and talked to him more. But that night at Waffle House, <laughs> I learned that, that that sister has some stuff to say. Amen. <laughs> and I feel like she's going to have some stuff to say tonight. So, sister, please come take your spot behind the pulpit. Be led by the Lord. There's no time constraint. People already know that if they have things they have to do, that they're welcome to do what they have to do. And we're going to have church. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Father, we just praise you and thank you. We give you the glory and honor and praise for who you are. Yes. Yes. And Father, I thank you that I'm just a vessel that you have chosen to use, not just a cool for, for my life. Yes. You chose me to give you glory and honor and praise. And I want to sit Brenda down and I want the Holy Spirit to rise up oh, okay. and have his way in the end. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We've been talking about reverence in God. Amen. Amen. And we know, I think we know, some of the ways that we can reverence God, especially when we come before God in prayer is one way we reverence Him. Okay, first of all, I want to say, the scripture tells us that we have to believe that He is. Yes. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. If we don't know that he is, then how are we going to reverence someone we don't know? Yes, right. The scripture also tells us that, you know, that's why God called us, each and every one of us, to talk to folks and just, you know, just be pretty and to know, to see when you work, when you're at work or wherever you are. You need to kind of feel folks out. And I take the time sometimes to pray before I, I, I yeah. minister to folks, especially when I was working. Because then you want to feel out and see, you know, where they are sometimes. And sometimes people can know where you are and they just start asking you things because they see the Christ in you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what we want so much. We want God to be exemplified in our lives that people say, there's something different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What is it? <laughs> I thought about that. Um, it's funny. I thought about this little lady. I, was, I used to do uh, CNA at nursing home. And this little lady, she was from Africa. And she would say, bloody this and bloody that and bloody this. <laughs> and so <laughs> she said, you're bloody different. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was a Jewish nursing home. And they told us when they hired us, you don't talk about Jesus. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. So I said, ooh, it's going to be a tall arm. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, she said, why are you so bloody different? <laughs> and I said, well, I got to tell my cousin. <laughs> I said, well, I'm a child of King. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And she, she didn't say that. She just kind of looked. <clears throat> And then she told me later on, she said, you're not like those other girls. They curse me out. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I wasn't saved, I would have been down. <laughs> I had the home training, praise God. And I just thank the Lord for that. But we need to be a light, is yeah. all I'm saying, wherever we go. Yes, sir. Amen. God wants us to glorify him in our words and in our actions. And I thank the Lord that, you know, he give, he give grace to the humble. <laughs> and a lot of times we need grace, especially when we come into this day. And still, as we walk with God, we need grace. Yes. Because sometimes we slip. And we're not at our best. 
But when we stay before the Lord, hallelujah, and have intimacy with God, yeah, yeah. I tell you, it helps you with your day. Yeah. Because that way you, you have spent time, and sometimes when you would have flown off the handle, then you can take things in stride when somebody come at you in the wrong way. But boy, I tell you, when you don't spend time, you know, I know Brenda rise up, okay? Yeah. I'm talking about y'all. But Brenda rise up sometimes, and the Lord, the Lord is so gentle, and he's so loving. Yes. But I thank God for his goodness. I thank God for the work, the finished work on the cross. Yes. He died that he could transform us, yes. and that we could be made into his image. Thank so God. we need to eat this. Yes. This word. We need to eat this. Yes. And when we eat that, the word of God, it'll put us in, in our place. Especially, I love the song and the Proverbs. Proverbs really tell you about yourself. <laughs> it talks about when you're a fool and all that. And I can see myself in the Proverbs. You know, I'm a fool. God, thank you. You know, and I thank you that I'm a work in progress and all of us are. But we need to uh, not make excuses and, and say that we just still a work in progress. But apply yes. the word of God to our lives and do what God calls us to do and be who he wants us to be because it's a lost world out there of people that doesn't know God and there are some people even in churches that don't really know God but they want to yes. they really want to know the Lord and sometimes you're going to be the only book that someone sees That's right. you know we don't know who's watching us That's right. I remember one Sunday I was going to church. I used to usher and I had my little cute black and white outfit. That's how we dressed and one of my white gloves and everything. And I had gone to the gas station. And I was on my way to church. And after service, you know, when you have guests, the pastor asked the guests to stand. This man stood up and he said, I followed her here to church. Wow. He said, she looks so nice and I just needed to go somewhere today and I didn't know where to go. So she she looked like she was going to church, so I followed her. Uh, yeah. I said, Ooh. So my pastor told me, I said, well, see, Sister Brenda, you better be doing the right thing. <laughs> and it's just so, you know, just to show you how people are watching and you don't even know. And they don't even have to know you. They just, people are hungry for something. Yeah. And they're looking for something. And a lot of times they end up in places and in spots uh, in their lives that takes them on the wrong track because they don't have an example. The Bible tells us that we are living epistles, seen and read of men. Yes. So if we're living epistles, we, that means that we want to glorify God in what we say and do. And so we have to really be on our P's and Q's. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to live in us and work in us through us, we, we can do that. It's nothing that cannot be attained. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to do it in and through us anyway. But we have to yield ourselves. Yes. That's the thing. We have to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit so he can do the work. Yes. And and a lot of times, that's the problem. And I wonder why, why, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't say I wonder why. I know why for me, you know what I'm saying? But every one of us have to know why for ourselves. Why? We, we, it's some questions that we just need to ask ourselves. You know, we want to do better, and we need to do better, but Lord, why am I in this spot? I'm telling you, I was seeking the Lord <coughs> and praying today, and God showed me something from five years ago, and I'm like, whoa, and I didn't think that, I, I, I mean, I never thought about it in the way that he, what he showed me, what he showed me, but I didn't ever think about what he said. I said, did I do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I say, well, you showed it to me. I know you, I did it. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't my heart. And sometimes we can do things without realizing that we, we are fearing or hurting someone. You right, know? Right. So, but that's why it's important also to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Because he'll show you things. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you can go through dry spells. I'm talking to Christians who are kind of mature right now in what I'm saying now. Have you ever had, you know, you have a prayer life and, you, and you're full of fight and then all of a sudden your fight comes and you're kind of down, you know what I'm saying? You don't feel like you used to feel the, the spirit of God. You kind of feel dry and you don't, you don't feel uh, the 
the joy and excitement of the Lord. <clears throat> but when you stop doing the things that you are normally doing, that's why. When you don't stay on your knees, when you don't read the word of God, when you don't seek his face, of course you dry. You get dry. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who rejuvenates us, rejuvenates us. And the word of God is our spiritual food. Yes. And seeking, is, seeking the Lord and praying and getting the will of God for our lives on our knees, he'll give us instructions. I know I have gotten instructions from the Lord and things that I know I didn't know what to do. But by prayer and seeking his faith, he has shown me, I'll tell me what to do. And sometimes I didn't know what to do. I was just going about my day and he'll say, don't go that way. I don't know why he, did. he said, don't go that way. But I just obeyed the voice of the Lord because he knew what was up ahead or what was behind. So I just praise the Lord and I just thank him. We're talking about references God. In everyday life, we should reverence God. We reverence God as we, like I said, pray, as we seek his face. And there are different ways that we can posture ourselves before the Lord. And there's no right or wrong way. Um, some people kneel. Some people, they prostrate. Some folks stand and praise the Lord. But however you feel to praise him, just do it. Just yes, do it. Yes, yes. It's, what's important is, we talk about this altar, uh, uh, altar in your home. But the altar is really your heart. That's the altar. Jesus. Because what you have in here, hallelujah, you know, we're going to demonstrate and we're going to live out what's in our hearts. And we don't know all of what's in our hearts because the Bible tells us the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it. Yeah. And so God will show us ourselves. He will show us things that's not right about us. And that's the love of God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we, we are shame. Sometimes, but shame is nothing but, uh, that's, that's devil, devilish. You know what I'm saying? It's to keep you bound. Amen? Right, right, right. Shame, discouragement, strife, and all kind of discouragement, all of that is of the enemy. Yes. Fear, doubt, and unbelief. I call them the three stooges. <laughs> they, wow. they work. <clears throat> you, they, that's the way they work. To discourage you to, so that you won't focus mm. on God. <clears throat> that's a distraction. So when we find ourselves in fear, and I'm sure we all have fears that serve sometimes. Yep. You don't think it's fear, but sometimes you have to really look and examine that thing, and you have fears about certain things, and you give them to God. And God will help you, amen? Because he said he didn't give us the spirit of fear, yes. but the power and the love and a sound mind. Yes. And I tell you what, that's what you can put on the enemy. Yes. When, you, when you see the enemy coming in, now, I say it like this. The scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, yes. the spirit of the Lord will lift up a stand against him. I say it like this. I say, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a stand against him. I'm going to be a flood. Yes. 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 Let the Lord flood the enemy. Yes. Yes. Amen. But when we transgress the law of God, it is all right. right. <laughs> because we are not obeying what the, thus says the Lord. I was looking at Matthew 15 and well, it's 12 or 2 I've got here. I think it's 2. And he was talking about the disciples was uh, they were telling the disciples about traditions of men. And you know, a lot of times I, I took this just for a thought. Um, we obey the traditions of man more than we traditions uh, obey the traditions of God, the word of God, or the law of God. And the tradition of men cannot trump the word of God. That's right. And we have so many things that we have to take off when we come to the Lord and put on. Because we don't know, so a lot of things we don't know that is not of God. A lot of things that we have heard and we put it on God and say the Lord said this. Now God, you look at the word of God, you don't even see those things. So, you know, so it's just things people made up, and it's traditions of men. But the word of God, hallelujah, is truth. And the word of God is life. The word of God will keep us, hallelujah. The word of God will help us. Yes. God has given 
confess his word so that we can be made whole through the obedience of by obeying his word. We can be made whole. And we don't have to be ashamed of living discouraged or be stressed out. But why do we? Why do we stress? Because we're not trusting. When we trust the Lord, and I can say this, I have had times where I really trusted and believed God for anything, and then I have times when I hadn't. Why? Because I allow the enemy to take a foothold. When we allow the enemy to come in and take a foothold, then we cannot continue walking in faith. Because fear is not of God. Amen. Faith is of God. And we take the word of God and stand on it. The word of God is our life, really. Because it's only by doing what the word of God says that we can do the life that Christ has called us to. It's by obeying his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, I was thinking about how I heard Pastor was talking about the children, and we know that the enemy is really after our children. And the, I, I, feel, I feel the burden for souls because children are not being, uh, I'm not saying all children, but a lot of what we see today is because children are not being taught values. That's right. And it starts in the home. It starts with the parents. And, and a lot of times, we're so free and, and uh, fancy free parents and do whatever we want to do till we don't teach our children things. And just the little things mean so much. You know, we uh, the people would know who you are and who your parents were because of the way you act. And, the way you, and you were so respectful. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you. And things like that. Those things are... They're small, but they, they go a long way. Yes. Because people know that you are, um, you're mannered. You know, you were taught. You have manners. Amen. Um, but I tell you, when I moved away from, from Louisiana and when I went, now that was cool here, but when I went to Texas and and um, and I would be working and I would say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Oh, they did not like that. Oh, I didn't, I, I mean, I was thrown into the zone. I was like, what? And, uh, and they told me, like, you're making me feel old. And, 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 and I find myself slipping when I'm going to patient room. I say, yes, ma'am. Didn't I tell you not to call me yes, ma'am? My name is Judy. <laughs> and what I say, well, Miss Judy, you're going to have to just, just, just ignore me, yes, ma'am, because I, it's ingrained in me. I didn't know what <laughs> I would find myself saying yes sir, no sir, and then I say, well, Lord, what I'm gonna do? Because I gotta, I gotta talk to the people, but I find myself just doing what no, naturally comes because you have that ingrained in you. So if we can have things ingrained in us from our parents. How much more the word of God? Amen. Amen. And we would get in the word of God and allow the word of God to 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 work on Amen. us and just. That's why it's so important for us to remember scripture. Amen. Because scripture helps us. You know what I'm saying? Not just to be a know-it-all, just to say you know scripture, That's but right. uh, I'll tell you there's been times that scripture's just saved me. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because the Holy Spirit will download something in yes. your mind. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, praise God. Foolishness is bound up in the, you know in the heart of a fool. You know, different stuff like that. And sometimes I have heard things and I said, oh, okay, okay, Lord, you're helping me. <laughs> but uh, because that's what we need to know the word of God for, so that we can know how to live and be fruitful in our walk. I was thinking about we know that the enemy is the accuser of the brother. Yeah. And we know that he charges us uh, by, offense, uh, by, by offense of crime, praise God. He, he'll blame us and, and, and for something that we've done wrong, or uh, uh, said that we've done wrong, because sometimes you can be accused of something and you know you did not do it. Right. And that's right. why he is the accuser of the brother. But God excused us. When he went to the cross and he paid our sin debt, he excused us. Yes. 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 
we are excused because of the precious blood of Jesus. Yes. But that's not an excuse for us to trample on the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he has excused us. Now we need to reverence him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. He paid the sin debt for us. Oh, that we hallelujah. didn't have to pay the price for sin. Yeah. And now he's asking us, you know, I was there, I had this thought. Salvation is free. Thank but you. it's going to cost you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It costs you your life. Mm -hmm. And how much more should we give our lives? Because that's what he did for us. That's right. We're doing no more than what he did for us. Hallelujah. Oh, I remember the scripture says in, uh, I think it's Hebrew, it says uh, that's, that's our reasonable service. Mm -hmm. We sacrifice our bodies. Making ourselves a living sacrifice for God. Holy and acceptable unto God. It's not a reasonable service. Yes, you know, we're yes, not even doing yes. extra. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we feel like or act like we're doing something over and above. But that is what's required. Yes. God is requiring us yes. to be light in a dark place. Yes. He is requiring us to live a life that he can be glorified. Yes. That souls may be won to his kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, help us. Help us to have a, a desire and a hunger for souls. Yes. Lord, help all of us. I'm not talking just to y'all, talking about all of us. Yes. And Lord, show us, direct <laughs> us where and who to talk to, where you want us to go, what we need to yes. be doing in this season. Yes. Because this time is dark. Yes. And it's getting darker and darker. Yes. And there's so many souls and so many people that need to be saved. Yes. We need to yes. see the light of Christ. Oh, in us. And we can bring it to them because we have it. Mm. And let's not sit down on God. Yes. Let's not sit down on Him. Mm. He is so worthy of our praise yes. and our glory yes. and our life. Out the sacrifice of our life. He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. And I was thinking, praise the Lord, about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of God in Isaiah 10, 27 defines the anointing as the burden removing yoke, destroying power of God. And when we come, hallelujah, together, hallelujah, and we mingle our wine, that's the Holy Spirit. When we come together with our minds set on Jesus. When we come together as an assembly of God, hallelujah, and we just mingle together, come with our minds set on him, leave everything else out, take it out of your mind, and just let it be him. But we can come in here and get on one accord. This is what I desire to see us coming together on one accord. Just like they did in the uh, in Acts. They were on one accord in one place. And the Holy Spirit came and he filled the house. Yes. What it was saying. And clove in tongues like as a fire sent out each of them. Amen. Yes. And then they spake with the tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. We need to desire more of God. Yes. And we receive more and more. See, that, that the, the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit is the initial, initial feeling. But just like a car, you have to re, you have to put gas in that car. Yeah. It's going to get empty. And this is what happens to us when we don't feel the Holy Spirit like we, well, like we used to. We are empty. Mm -hmm. And we need to fill up. And how you fill up is just to stay in His presence. Yeah. Yeah. We can stay full of God if we stay in His presence. Read His Word. And loving one another. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says we have the love of Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we can demonstrate the love of Christ because Christ is love. He is love. Yes. Amen. Yes. So therefore we are love and we know how to love. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. And we have to learn how to love the unlovely. Yes. <laughs> because you know it is always going to be somebody that's going to get under your, your skin. But we have to learn how to love the unlovely because Christ did it for us. Yes. And I know I was a lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and still working on some things, some ice. 
active again. He's still working on some ice. And I'll tell you what, this is an everlasting work as we live our lives with Christ. He's going to be working till the day he come on us. But I'll tell you what, if, we don't, if we're a dumb hole to live a life, a celebrate life for Christ, I mean, we separate ourselves just for him, you know, he, we are overcoming, but we can overcome. Because he said it in his word. God can tell us to do something we can't do. Yes. And so if we can do it, he said we can do it, because he's given us the power by his spirit to do these things. Yes. So we are overcomers. You know what? We need to see ourselves that way. Amen. Yes. We need to see ourselves as overcomers. Amen. And when the enemy comes in like, like he, he wants to come in like a flood, but like a flood, we're going to flood him out with the word of God. Amen. Amen. I know when sometimes when I get thoughts of things that come in my mind and I know they're not right, I say, oh, no, say, you ain't going to try that one. Not today. I say, not on my watch. I say, that's under the blood. You know how the enemy will come back and try to accuse you of things that happened years ago? Yeah. Because that's what he is, the accuser of the brother. And so you have to know what to say, know what to do when he come at you. Not think on that thing. Because if you think on it, then you give it over to him. But when you you when you know something's not right, you rebuke it. Yes. And you have a word for him. The yes. word of God. You have a word out of the word of God for him because my words ain't gonna mean nothing. But God's word is all Yes. Well, 
And it was about six hours. And there cometh a woman of Samaritan to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. But his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. When, when then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Praise God. So, in other words, you don't know who you're talking to. Because <laughs> if you did, you'd be asking me. So the woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? She's thinking natural, of course, praise God. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and, and, drank, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Amen. Amen. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water. Springing up into everlasting life. Amen. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The water that he gives. Amen. The Spirit signifies different things. Amen. He talks about the wine, the oil, water. The Spirit signifies different things in the Word of God. And water here is he's, he's referring to the Holy Spirit. And when we are full of the Holy Spirit, amen, we can, we can live a life that's pleasing to God. When we seek the Lord often and stay full, keep our tank full of the water, the living water that Jesus has given us, we can overcome anything. And everything. Amen? Amen. So, Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come thither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said, Well, thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that said thou truly. So my God, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So she knew he read her mail. Amen? Amen. So she knew that he was more than just a mere man. Amen? <clears throat> Our fathers worship in the mountains. She changed the subject, okay? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Our fathers worship in this mountain. And he said that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Amen. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. You know, God had come to the Gentiles yet. But anyway, he said, you don't, you don't know what you worship. Amen. She changed the subject because he was he got he got he got her mail read. And so she wanted to talk about worship. Amen. <laughs> so he talked about worship too. He, one thing about God, I love him. He, he gets on your page. Amen. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about that? Okay, we'll talk about that. But then he says, Amen. But the hour is coming. The hour is coming, 23. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You heard that? Must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we can't even give him true worship except by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And by the truth of the word of God. We can't lie and say, or say speak things that's not of God. That's not true worship. 
That makes it error. Amen. I was thinking about um, Moses when he was in the presence of uh, in the tent. Praise God. And uh, the, he saw the three uh, men, the, uh, the uh, angelic men. I think they were angelic because he knew that they were of uh, God. And he ran and worshipped. He got on his knees. Hey, this is the first time in the Bible where they show where man worship you know he got down before them and, and to worship when he when they came to present themselves what the lord was going to say to him and then they fell and they fell on their face and he fell on his face and, the, and he fell on his face as he did, came out of the tent and the glory of the lord appeared to them amen so Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But worship is something that God has instituted in his word. God wants to be worshipped. However your posture is, I'll say, it doesn't matter. But God wants to be worshipped because he deserves to be worshipped. Yes. Yes. And the Bible tells us that that's what we're going to do before the throne of God. Yes. We're going to yes. worship. Now, if we can't worship here on earth, how in the world are we going to work? I don't think we're going to get there. Amen? Right, if right. we can't worship here, we're not going to be one of the worshipers. <laughs> because you have to start where you are. Amen? Amen. I am mean, being trained. Amen? Amen? This is like we in rehearsal here on, on this earth yes. to do what we need to do when we, when we get with him. Because we're with him now. We don't have to wait to get to a place called a heavenly place because he said he has given us to see, we sit in heavenly places here in Christ Jesus right here on earth. He causes us to sit in heavenly places here on earth. Yes. And if you ever have been in his presence and have felt a, a holy hush or just felt the glory of God all yes. over you, you know that you are not in a natural realm. You are in a spiritual realm yes. with the Lord. Yes. Because yes. he takes you other places. Amen? Amen. And, and you feel like, and afterwards you feel like you can fly. Amen? Amen. That's how high you feel that when you get in the presence of the Lord and he takes you away. Yeah. And uh, I had to laugh because I used to, when we used to have prayer um, at a church I was at, um, I, I, I would get lost in prayer. And, um, and this was to say, where do you go? Take me with you. <laughs> I, I'll just be crying out to God. And I, I say, girl, you got to, I say, this is one thing you got to get for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I say, you just give it for the Lord and he'll take you there. Because yeah. I know you're going to be here with us. <laughs> but God is so good, you know, that's what being in this presence is like. I'm giving you kind of an example, if right. you don't know, right. that you can go places. I tell you, once in prayer, the Lord told me that, because I, I had a heart for people of India. And um, and the Lord told me, Brenda, I can take you places on your knees. Yes. Kid you not. He took me places on my knees. You could be in prayer in the U.S. praying somewhere else. That's right. You don't know about, you don't know those people, but God knows. Right, yes. right. God, and, and I'm telling you, there's no boundaries in the spirit. Amen? There's no boundaries. God is the spirit, and he can He can take us anywhere. Amen? Amen. And I think that is so amazing. Yes. Because sometimes people see things and you can't make, you, you know, they wonder. Because we're not used to the spirit realm, you know what I'm saying? But we're spirit beings, so we should be used to, be, get used to the spirit realm because that's the way God wants to use us. Amen? Amen. Amen? He can take you. I'm going to give you an example. I was on my knees praying. And it was like 6 o'clock. I had that prayer time. Then at that time, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I saw my pastor driving his truck. And I saw him about to have an accident. And I was crying. God showed it to me. And then he told me later on that he called him and asked him, what you were doing, da 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 this time. And I told him where he was. At, uh, uh, 
going to get on I-30. And, uh, and I told him, I described what, what was happening. He said, I didn't know that, brother. I didn't know that, sister, brother. He's hollering on that phone. I said, because the Holy Spirit showed it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I said, so yes. that's how important it is yes, yes, yes. to be able to, to have a prayer life because God can save someone. That's Amen. You can be yeah. the answer to somebody's deliverance yes. of saving yes. life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I remember yes. once I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was reading my Bible. And all of a sudden, God showed me two men fighting. And I knew who they were. I just know who called them in. And, uh, and they were fighting. And one stabbed the other. And they were related to me. And I, I cried out. I cried out. I cried out. Never said anything to them. Years later, I went. I moved to Dallas. I was in Louisiana. And then I moved to Dallas. And my sister was telling me something. And she told me, that and I said what she told me what I saw and I said what I said when was this you know and she, I know you don't even know exactly when it was but da 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 I remember it was a Friday night and I remember what money was and um and shown sure up that's what it was I saw just what I saw you yeah. know what I'm saying yes. what was happening and so God can take us places Hallelujah. in the spirit and he can have us to pray. Yes. I, I'm a twin, okay? My twin is a male. And my my twin, he uh he was on drugs real bad. And I always would feel him, even when his children, I always protect him. He got embarrassed when he got older because I'll fight you from the twin. <laughs> Don't mess with my problem. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so anyway, I was crying out. I was crying out and crying out to the Lord for my brother. And God would show me stuff about my, with my brother. He would actually would show me things. And I would tell him, and he would look at me like, you know, <laughs> because God, God was after him. I see God was after him. But he was on drugs so bad, and I didn't have enough sense this particular night. I went in at night in a bad neighborhood. And I, and I got out of my car, because he was on my heart so so strong. And but the house was dark. And the Holy Spirit said, Don't go in there. And the door was cracked. He said, the Holy Spirit said, Don't go in there. Go back to your car. And I ran back to the car and got in the car. And the next day I went to see him with, and I had my daughter with me. And uh, he was outside with no shirt on. He looked horrible. Mm. He looked like, I told him, he looked like death on the soul cracker. Mm. And that's how bad he had went down. And I told him, I told him what the Lord had told me. I said, if you don't get with God, mm. you're not going to be here long. Mm. God is warning you. Yes. And he knows I had told him things before, so he knew. I was talking. He knew it was true. Yeah, yeah. And so, praise the Lord. He, he left and he moved back to Louisiana. And God blessed him and got it. He, he took himself to, the Lord blessed him to go to a rehab. He got clean and he's been here ever since. And praise the Lord. I can say he's off. He's better off. He received Christ. Amen. When God put a burden on you, I said, we, we don't have a burden for everybody. Mm. I mean, because that's just the way I think God works. Uh, but when he put a burden on you, with, when he put yes. somebody on your heart and they stay on your heart, please pray for them. Yes. Yes. Because it, it, it's for a reason. Yes. Yes. It's not just, he don't just give you people, uh, give you a person. Mm -hmm. But I noticed when I hadn't seen somebody in a long time and I stood, stood and think about them, then I run into them. <laughs> but it's, it's to pray for them. You know, know what God wants to do for that person. Maybe he wants you to pray and then when you see him, you know what to say, you know. Because God works all kind of ways, in mysterious ways. And I just love the way he does things. Amen. Amen. He does it and he does it right. Yes. Amen. Always. Always right. We know that in God's presence is the fullness of joy. And in his presence there is 
treasures forevermore, pleasures and treasures. I say treasures, but pleasures, the scriptures say. God has treasures, amen, and we are a treasure, amen. amen. He said we are earthen vessels, amen. Oh, we are earthen vessels that we may give God glory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, that we may give him glory. We are vessels that God wants to use just to glorify himself. Amen. Yes. And he deserves it all. He yes. deserves all of it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I was thinking about when the uh, the Babylonians were building the Tower of Baal in Genesis. They wanted to build that building, that tower, so it could get to heaven. Amen. They wanted the scripture said that they did not want to be scattered throughout the land. Amen. So they wanted to build a tower that they could stay together. I hadn't really seen that till I read it not too long ago that they didn't want to be scattered and the very thing that they didn't want that's what happened to them because they wanted to be as God mm -hmm. amen they wanted to be like God they wanted to be as God their own their own uh, they wanted to do things that, of their own and the very thing that they said they didn't want to be scattered that's what God did he confounded their language and he scattered them all over the earth Amen. 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 But we can do things for our own good, but it's not what God <coughs> wants for us. God has a purpose for us, in other words. But the purpose that he had given them, he had told them to be fruitful and multiply. But they, wasn't, they didn't want to do that. They were doing the opposite of what God told them. They wanted to build a tower so they could reach heaven. And they wanted to be as God. Amen. But nobody, got, see, God said, let us go down and confuse their language. <laughs> God, you, we can't all do him. Yeah. He made the universe, everything that is made is by God and is made for him. Yeah. Not just by him, but for him. Amen. Everything is made for his glory. Amen. Amen. He gets the glory from, from the elements. We look at the elements, the sky, the trees. The flowers, the birds, the bees, everything is for God's glory. Amen. And he said that Solomon, even though he was dressed, he wasn't even arrayed as the flowers. And, and the beauty of the flowers was more arrayed than Solomon. You know, when you got money, <laughs> you can really look good. But then God doesn't have anything on what God does. Amen. Amen. And we know that's true because we're going to walk on the streets of gold. Oh, yeah. Hey! Yeah. Hey, don't mean that much to him. Huh? Yeah. We're going to walk on the streets of gold. Thank oh, yeah. gold. So I just praise him and thank him for what he's doing. Amen. amen. There is a fountain. Amen. There is a fountain, and Jesus is the fountain of life. He has given us the fountain of life that we can drink freely. Amen. I thought about the scripture just now popped in my mind is in Isaiah, I think it's 55. He tells you to come unto the waters. At the, he that thirst. Come and buy with no money. Hallelujah. You don't have to have anything to come to him. Hallelujah. That's what's so good about God. People of a, a stat, statues and people that's well off, they look down on, on you, but Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They didn't look down on Jesus. So we're in good company, aren't we? Yeah. They looked down at Jesus. They didn't believe that he was the king. You did all of these things, come down. You know, you can come off that cross. Oh, thank God he did. Because they wanted to, they were laughing and they were really marking him. But boy, I tell you, he got the last laugh. Because we know that in the end, we win. Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. already won the victory on the cross for us. And all we need to do is walk this thing out. Amen? Amen. We need to walk in the Spirit of God Hallelujah. and allow the Holy Spirit to have its way in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. Yes. We need to be real. Amen. And come clean with God. Amen. We need to be real about things in us 
with God. Now, you don't have to tell nobody else, but get real with God. Mm. And examine yourself, the scripture said, and see whether you be in the faith. Sometimes you can thank you so why you're not. That's right. That's why we need to examine ourselves. And this is our mirror. The word of God is a mirror. Amen. But we can look and we can see that we are not lying enough. Amen. Oh, I, I see. I said, oh, Lord, help me. You know what I'm saying? And as we cry out for the help of the Lord in yes. this different areas in our life, he is faithful and just. He will help us. Yes. He will mold us and shape us into what he wants us to be. Amen. But he doesn't do it without us submitting ourselves. Yes. We cannot get what we need from God if we doesn't submit ourselves to him. Because this is it's our, we have a part to play. And sometimes I think that we think God is gonna do everything. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you hear people say, Well, God don't have to do it. Mm, yeah, right. God don't have to do it as you give yourself to Him. Yes. And yet, right, yeah. even in marriage, marriage symbolizes Christ in the church. But I tell you, the scripture says uh, the two shall become one. <coughs> that is coming to something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. It, yeah. Work, it works out for fans. I think about Angie out there when she was up here Sunday. Yeah, that, that marriage will work out some stuff in you. And I tell you, because you can't, <laughs> you becoming one. Amen. You put any two people together, <laughs> they got their own mind, they got their own mind on one thing, and, and they, it's a tussle. Yeah. You know, so you have to come together and be unified. Amen. Right. And I tell you what, it's some good when you marry somebody to say when you say, don't <laughs> marry somebody and not say. Amen. 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 Because that was a lie. 
Yes. But he ended up leaving there with riches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hallelujah. God is somebody, isn't he? Yes, but he because is. of who he, 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 because of who Abraham trusts, mm. he trusts God. But in that instance, he did not right. because of what he thought men would do to him. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes we can be so afraid of what man can do. Come on, help and us. And not what God can do. Mm. Amen. Because God's a protector. Amen. He can keep us. Amen. In the times of trouble. When we're going through things that look like all hell will not break loose or all hell is breaking loose, God. I know he told me one time, I was going through something, he told me to stand still. I was going to try to defend myself. I was being accused of something at work, and it wasn't true. And uh, they fired me. And uh, I was trying to get a hold to a person that knew that wasn't true. And God told me to leave it alone. He said, leave it alone. I got this. <laughs> so I said, uh -huh. I'm just going to draw me some money. So I'm just sitting at home for a while. <laughs> You know they don't want to pay me. So they was fighting me. And uh, the guy that I was trying to get a hold to, he, they, they had him as one of the witness for them. Now you go pay me. But God told me he had. And so when we was talking on the phone with the lady from the uh, unemployment office, uh, they was t telling their little stuff and everything. I was quiet and, I was, and baby was in there praying. He was in the room and we praying, praying, praying. And, um, and so she said, Ms. Young, is there anything you want to say? And I said, yeah, I need to, to, I have a question for David. I'm going to call him David. And then I asked him, when you walked in the room, what was going on when you, when you walked in the room? And he told the truth. So I said, he could, God told me he had it. And that's what saved me. He was letting them know they were lying. <laughs> Right, right. They look at you kind of funny, but they know, they know that God 
other thing in life, but I'll tell you what. When they get in trouble, when they get sick, who they call? That's crazy. <laughs> that one that they look at sometimes. That's the truth. They call, they call me. And I'll be laughing to myself. I'll say, look at this. But God, amen. So they know they see God. Amen. It's just that they're just not going to say it. <laughs> but God is a wonder. He is a wonder in my soul. Oh, I bless your name, God. I thank you today. I give you glory and honor and praise. I didn't, hallelujah. I just did what I felt the Lord had me do. Just talk. Just talk. Amen. I said, Lord, I'm going to get out the way and you have your way. Yes. And the Lord had a little small board of everything. But the, the basis of what we're talking about tonight is trusting God. Mm, yes. And walking out our destiny. Amen. Yes. We need to walk out what God has called us to. And if you don't know what God has called you to, get with it. Yes. Just ask it. Yes. Ask him, what, what, what's my purpose? Yes. We know that soul winning is all on purpose, but we have uh, certain areas God has called us to. Specific things, uh, specific things. And you need to know what it is. You need to know what your giftings are. You know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of times you find that out when you, come, when you receive Christ and you see how God used you. Yes. And then, then you can kind of know from that how... You know, because that's what I do. And sometimes, I, I don't know, sometimes when I was sitting in church, sometimes I could just see people's giftings. And, uh, but then there's something that I said, Lord, what you call me to do? <laughs> I know I had to ask the Lord, what was my gift? You know what I'm saying? And on my knees, and he gave me what he, he told me, what, what he had gifted me for. Amen. But I tell you, God is good. And he has a plan for your life. <clears throat> So please, please get with him, love on him, live for him, and allow him to do what he wants to do in your life. Because I tell you, obedience is better than sacrifice. And I tell you, he has a plan, and we cannot outgive him. The things that we desire, a lot of things we desire we don't have because we don't do what God asks us, asks of us. Now, he, he doesn't hold back. Because, well, I'm going to say this. A lot of times, he may hold back. Because, we, you know, God is, God is wise. And we as parents know how to give our children things that we know that they are capable of handling. We give it to them. And some days we have to hold back. Because we know they're not ready for it. How much more God? Amen. How much more God? And then he is a rewarder. You want to give your kids everything when they listen. You know, you want to reward them. So how much more God? Yes. He said he would, he would reward us if we did it to the Yes. And so it's things that we, we need. And sometimes the answer is not no. The answer is just not right now. Yes. It's a timing. Yes. God has a timing for things. Yes. yes. And we have to be in his timing. And we just have to trust and believe God that he'll do just what he said. Amen? Amen. Because timing is everything with God. So I am going to ask uh, Naya and the, yeah. and the band to come up and, and play a song. I asked Naya to play for me. Amen. To close out. And I am going to ask everyone to Come to the altar and just leave any burden you have at the altar. Good, yeah. Leave any burden you have. Anything you can see within yourself that God has pointed out while you're sitting there, while, while God was speaking through me, just leave it at the altar. Say bye bye. Some things we need to say bye to. And don't pick them up again. Amen. Fear, doubt, unbelief. Let them go. Don't let them run you. Don't let them stretch you. <coughs> Allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. And it is through you.
Who's made?